moment. I am our lone white man, so if you will, bring your hand, we'll uh, get you taken care of. Sorry, I'm from Yeah, big time. Tori, what happened with your helmet after the Clemson game? Um, I didn't know the ACC had a rule where the fans can rush the field at the end of the game. And um, I was trying to get to my mother, and people were pulling on me. And before I knew it, my helmet was gone. And, you know, the fans were celebrating, and they, I'm sitting there just being as happy as I can with them. But I was like, man, my helmet, my helmet. So, uh, you know, I put out a, a notice on Facebook. I was like, if anyone has my helmet, just, you know, give it back to me. And, you know, we'll find some type of mutual ground to, you know, to compensate them for that. But, you know, it's all good because I got another one now. Or you've seen what other offensive offenses have done to Auburn. Is this just a case where you just have to keep putting your foot on their jugular and just never let up? Yeah, um, well, that's with any team. But this week, you know, we really have to focus and execute. You know, it's one of the it's, it is the biggest game of the season, and um, everyone's going to have complete focus and they're going to be ready to play. So, you know, from the offensive side of the ball, we're going to do what we need to do, and hopefully, we come out successful. Tori, how aware of you? of the stakes in the sense that if you win this game, you go to the Sugar Bowl, if you lose this game, you fall pretty significantly down to a bowl that probably doesn't gain nearly as much interest. So is that something you guys even pay attention to? Yeah, it's motivation because, uh, you know, like Coach Junior was telling me, you know, he was fortunate enough to win a, a national championship at Oklahoma. And, and that uh, pregame meal, he wore his ring. And, you know, everyone sat at the table and we were just mesmerized by it because, you know, one day I want to put that ring on my finger and, you know, let everyone know and I was the SEC champion. So um, we have the opportunity to do it this week, and we we need to win this game. You know, it's, it's the big one. Tori, how jacked up is the team about going down and playing in the Georgia Dome? Uh, very excited. You know, it's the first time, this is the first time I've played in a dome, and, you know, being around a great facility, and, you know, the, the town of Atlanta is going to be an opportunity for us to go out and show the world what we have. Tori. Um, I, I guess just from the way you're talking, you guys are very aware, I guess, of the historical, uh, I guess, significance of this. This school's only won one conference championship. Uh, yeah, um, it's just all the motivation in the world. You know, we, you know, they won the ACC championship back in the day, but now we have the opportunity to, to open up doors for Carolina football in this program. And uh, Saturday, you know, we're going to do everything we can do to win. Tori, you, you've watched from the inside of the maturing process of Stephen Garcia, quarterback. Take me from where he was in the off first Auburn game when he lost to this Saturday when they stopped, you know, Clemson shut down or tried to shut down Marcus, and he was able to compensate and do other things with the offense, just where that process has gone. Uh, uh, Garcia's just done a great job of holding himself accountable. You know, at one point he struggled running the ball when he had to uh, get out of the pocket, but you know, with coach and him watching film and seeing how a turnover could, you know, could kill the game, he, he's really just become a, a better player and a leader. So, you know, I tip my hat off to him because, you know, he takes a lot of criticism, but he just continues to work and get better each week. Stephen up front. I mean, Tori up front. Tori, you had a, a quiet couple of games. It's just been kind of how the games have gone. Is that frustrating to you when, you, when you're out there and you just pass block and not get the ball thrown your way? Uh, it's, that's part of being a team player. You know, I tried to block a punt. You know, I, I wasn't successful doing that. But, you know, whatever it takes to win, if it's springing mark is open on a touchdown run or block a play outshine or, or when the ball comes to me, me selling out doing whatever it takes to win this game on Saturday, you know, everyone on the team is willing to do it. So you're going to see 100% effort out of everyone. Tori, could you talk about just the difference uh, about the um, attitude on the team, maybe the chemistry on the team, comparing this year going into the SEC championship game and last year preparing to go to the Papa John's uh, combo? Yeah, we're very tight as a team. You know, on Thanksgiving, we was able to uh, eat with the Epworth kids, and 18 of us got stuck in the elevator. And that's just something that brought our team together. You know, we, we were in the elevator, and guys – you know, where some guys were panicking and other guys were, you know, they frustrated. But, you know, we, we came together and we was able to make it out. But when we were coming out of the elevator, the uh, EMTs and I guess the emergency people, the, the people that fixed the elevator, 
all our teammates were there cheering us on as we walked out. And as a as a team player, man, that just meant a lot to me. You know, it it was kind of funny, but at the same time, we really have each other back no matter what. So, you know, this is probably the closest Carolina team that's ever been here. Who were some of the guys from Patty? Um, <laughs> T.J. Johnson, he, he, he was turning red. And he looked like he was about to faint. And Lottie, Lottie was in there. Uh, Lottie was just being himself. But then at one point, he kind of got nervous because uh, – they told us it was going to be 30 minutes, and we was already in there an hour and 30. So, you know, we were stuck in the elevator for two hours. But, you know, we, we all, you know, got it together, and I was just happy we made it out alive. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked a little about Auburn's ability to come back on teams this year. I mean, this past week, I think it was 24 points. They've done it against you guys. I mean, it just seems like if you get up on them, you got to make sure you keep the hammer down, maybe unlike what you did last. Uh, it just also shows that they're a great team and they have great leadership. You know, whoever is talking in that locker room at halftime, you know, those guys are listening. And we have the same type of leaders on our team. So, you know, whatever it takes, you know, whatever it takes on Saturday, you know, it may happen. We may have to come from behind and win. So, you know, we all, we're, we're similar and different in our own ways. So we'll just have to see it on Saturday. Tori, Coach Sprayer was talking about the first offense against the first defense some. Uh, what have you seen improvement-wise from your secondary since that Arkansas game when they when uh, Coach Ellis made all those different changes? Um, I guess the defensive coaches just uh, simplified the schemes, and now guys know you know to cover their certain areas and a certain man, and it's just they're comfortable now. You know, there's not too many checks out there, and you know everyone is really reaping the benefits. You know, we're getting teams three and out. And, you know, as an offense, that's great because that's more scoring opportunities for us. Is there one thing that you, when you go out there against them in practice, that you say, boy, this is what they're really doing better than they were before? Um, I guess I had to let a coach answer that question because I'm so focused on my assignment. Mm -hmm. You know, I really don't know. So, but, you know, apparently it's working. Are they letting their athleticism come through more? Yeah, they're things? comfortable. You know, when yeah. guys, when they don't have to think and they can just react, you know, you can play a lot faster and make plays you're capable of making. What to do in terms of confidence, knowing that in the playoff era of the SEC, last 18 years, your coach is pretty much understood to be the, the big game coach in the SEC over this time. And uh, so those things that he's telling to you have some history behind it. Does that help uh, a team's confidence? Yeah, uh, I mean, Coach Spurrier is offensive genius. You know, he's going to put us in the in, in the right place to to be successful. You know, he I'm quite sure he watches a lot of film. He's been doing it all year long, but right now, I bet you he knows just as much about Auburn as the player at Auburn does know about himself. So, you know, he's going to continue to just uh, find things, weaknesses in the defense for us to expose and turn into scoring opportunities. Talk a little bit about Marcus Lattimore. He's, you know, coming in as a freshman. Think everything's put on his shoulders, and he seems to have handled this, you know, obviously rather humbly. Um, is that a surprise to you? How does the locker room think about that? Um, Marcus is one of the best people I, I've ever been around. You know, he's very humble and he works extremely hard. You know, he came in with, you know, a lot of height, but he really backed it up by his play. You know, he doesn't speak a lot, and um, you know, after touchdown runs, he'll come up to the guys that block for him. And, he, you know, he told me thank you many times on, um, you know, blocks that the, the eye, you know, the naked eye wouldn't see. But, you know, with Marcus being a great person and just being humble, he's just, he's thankful for everything, for everything. And it just makes me want to go out and, you know, block whoever I need to block for him and score over and over again. Tori, was there a moment for you, um, was it during the preseason, some other time in practice, or during a game when you, saw Marcus do something and he said, man, this guy's kind of special. Um, well, during camp, you know, he ran over one of our best tacklers, uh, DJ Swearinger, and uh, the way he did it, it was just in a very violent and aggressive way. And uh, also, he, he caught a pass on Stephon Gilmore when he came out of the backfield. He never saw Stephon, and Stephon put a nice uh, lick on him, and he, you know, he caught the pass, got up, brushed himself off, and he was ready to play again, and that's when I realized he was a ball player. Also, we know how passionately uh, Coach Spurrier talks about the SEC championship game, how much he enjoys coaching in that game. 
do you also get that sense from him? Are, are there things that he's been saying that uh, makes you realize that, yeah, he's, uh, he's really looking forward to this? Um, just knowing the history of SEC football and, you know, when you think of the SEC championship game, you think of, you know, the traditional schools like Alabama, Florida, Tennessee, and, uh, of course, you don't think of Coach Spurrier. And knowing he's been in this situation many times, you know, it, 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 it's soothing as a player because you know he, he's been in almost every situation you can be in. So we just know on Saturday, you know, he, he's going to have everything laid out for us to win this game. Tori, uh, two questions. One, everyone talks about Marcus and Alshon on the offense, but I get the feeling that it's more than just them because Marcus didn't have his best game against Clemson. Just the point that he was out there, though, kept the passing game open. I, I guess, yeah, their presence, you know, because you always have to key those guys no matter what. And, you know, that just leaves opportunities for, you know, other players to make plays. Justice Cunningham made plays. DeMarco, Brian Maddox had a few good runs. So, you know, it, it's a total team effort. Other question is if you had to be trapped in an elevator again, who are the three guys you just do not want with you again? Um, <laughs> now, if, if it happened again, I, I would take those same 17 other guys because, you know, it just brought us together as a group. You know, I learned a, a little bit about all those guys in the elevator, so. Going back to Marcus, have you ever seen a young man like that take care of the ball the way he does? Yeah, uh, he, he does a good job of avoiding the big hits. You know, at times you can see a safety coming down hill full speed and he finds a way to maneuver around him and to fall forwards to get the extra yard. So, you know, that's just something he's been blessed with. And, you know, we have other running backs that can do the same, but Marcus is, is just, you know, he does it on a night-in and night-out basis. He said he had a fumbling problem in high school and that Jay Graham worked a lot with him. Did you notice anything like in, in pre-camp drills where he would put the ball on the floor? Uh, no, I really didn't because when he came in, he was pretty polished as a player. So, um, you know, he fitted right into the system and, and, and that's history. You worry about getting lost in Peachtree because apparently there's Peachtree everything in Atlanta? Uh, I'm just worried about just playing the game, you know, all the other stuff, you know, that's for the fans and for my family, but my concern is just winning this game. Um, Tori, obviously, just, uh, you know, Marcus opens up the passing game, but if you could just talk a little bit about, you know, obviously Steven needs time and the offensive line is given. Any guys in the O-line that have kind of stood out this year, unsung heroes, anything that kind of stands out to you on the O-line? Um, everybody, and to be honest with you, you know, Coach Elliott, you know, has rotated guys around and the guys that did start, you know, everyone has made a play, and um, there's been a few times where I was I would be blocking a defensive back, and Rakeemus Watkins would have one of the linemen back there where I'm at. Well, you know, downfield where I'm at. So that just letting me know that these guys are really getting after it every play, and it's you know it's great knowing that people are just doing whatever it takes to win. Just wanted to clarify, Tori, that uh, elevator was that here at William Bryce? Yeah, that was here at William Bryce uh, on Thanksgiving after the. Uh, the dinner we had with Edward. I just wondered your thoughts on Cam Newton being on the sidelines watching him play. Um, well, you know, I just pray that our defense is ready, you know, for that task. You know, he's a pretty good player and he's proven that, you know, he can get the job done. But, you know, I'm very confident confident in our defense that they're going to make the plays for us to win this game. How do you keep your focus, Tori? Uh, this is, I mean, the, to date, the biggest game in the school's history. I mean, how do you as a player just kind of Keep your focus on class, practice, and just uh, being in tune to the Saturday. Um, just my relationship I have with God and just talking with my mom. You know, she lets me know every day that she loves me.